Well, I'm back to our 1920s renovation project and phase two, which is where we are building our extension. And it's a bit of a kind of self-build extension. Obviously we've got trades employed, but I am gonna be the principal contractor. I'm project managing it all. And I'm gonna kind of take you through what's involved in doing a self-build extension. Today is groundwork prep day, ready for foundations to start. Hiya folks, welcome back to the show. So, as I say, today we've got a lot to do so that everything is ready to start on the foundations as soon as we get the last little bits of paperwork through so that we can actually start. It took forever for planning permission to go through because of everything that's been going on over the last couple of years. There's been material shortages and a million other problems. <laughs> a million other things have kind of got in the way. But uh, let it never be said that we are not determined and we will get this done. So today we have got a lot of clearance work to do. So the first bit we've already kind of done because we can't risk running out of materials mid build and there's been various problems with access to things like concrete blocks and all that sort of thing. We have pre-ordered everything that we need for this extension or pretty much all, all the big stuff that we've, we've kind of pre-ordered. So, we have the world's biggest concrete block mountain here. That is 1,500 concrete blocks, seven Newton blocks, that I'm just trying to kind of vaguely keep them dry so that when the bricky starts, everything's ready to go. But yeah, that was fun, moving those. We've also got all the trench blocks. So all the trench blocks are under there. And we've got a pallet of engineering bricks as well you can only just see the engineers but all covered up and uh, ready to go so that is enough to well and truly get out of the ground we've got our concrete lintels for going over the drain run so if you remember we've got the drain run the lateral uh, sewer at the back of the house that needs to be lintled over so these will get cut up into 900 lintels it was easier to buy two 1800s and uh, just chop them in half we did start moving these from obviously they get dropped off at the front of the house so there's probably about a 50 meter run to bring them into this kind of storage area that we've got over here and it was a case of just shifting them six at a time in the wheelbarrow that's as many as a wheelbarrow could take so you can imagine how many journeys that was so eventually we thought sod that for a laugh and we hired in one of these little kind of stand on motorized uh, dumper truck things and this honestly can't recommend it enough the bucket of this holds about the equivalent of four wheelbarrows i would have said we were comfortably getting about 20 to 25 blocks in one go. So basically we've, it's a quarter of the number of journeys that you're, you're making and plus it's motorized. So you're not wearing your arms out while you're doing it. It's got like a high lift thing so that it can get over the edge of the uh, skip. So highly recommend it for the cost of hiring one of these. Uh, I can't remember how much it was, like 60 quid a day, if that, maybe less. I've ended up hiring it for two days and I've got a few of the jobs that I can get on with. So on day one, we've already moved four more pallets of uh, like stuff from the front of the house to the back of the house. And we thought, well, while we've got it, we might as well make use of it and uh, do a bit of kind of tidying up, get a skip, yet another skip, and uh, get as much stuff cleared around the back as possible so that we're pretty much ready to do the uh, foundations. So one of the big things that we've done around here, I don't know if you remember, but there was bushes all the way down here. And honestly, uh, Mrs. Mack pretty much cleared all this single-handedly, uh, but this was completely overgrown. If you remember, this is where the dog rose was, uh, the great big rose bush. Look at this, here, here's what's left of it. This is the uh, stump of the dog rose best part of probably nearly five inches wide at the base there it'll probably grow back but uh, for the minute we just need it to get it out the road but that left best part of a full skip load of organic material which i couldn't really do anything with you know it's twigs and branches and stuff we are obviously keeping firewood but there's only so much that you can keep so 
that needs to go in the skip. And we've also got all the rubble and whatnot out of the drain run that we dug out last time. And we've got rubble from the old foundation stone, the side of the house and various other things that will quite happily go in the skip. So what I've got is everything cleared out to a degree that everything else is just going to be soil that needs to be dug out and once we get the mini digger, once we've got all the final approval through, then we will make a start on the next section. Another nice little find in all of this, so we dug out what we thought was just kind of some sort of concrete path along the front here. It was all kind of crazy paved and broken and we were going to be just chucking it in the skip. But check this out, it turns out it was all solid sandstone, really nice. Uh, this will clean up lovely and I hate chucking stuff away that I know I'm going to have to buy again. So we've just kept this to one side for the minute. We've got the room to store it and that'll get used at some point for a project. Oh, and by the way, the studio window finally arrived. Acoustic glass, I will talk about this more on a future episode. I've just got a board up on the inside there to try and protect it because this is obviously a workshop at the minute, but acoustic glass there and uh, very excited about that. It's weird, it sounds like you're tapping on, doesn't sound like you're tapping on glass, it sounds like you're tapping on plasterboard or something. So that means we can finally get on with finishing the uh, studio room off and getting all the cladding done and finish the soffits and whatnot because at the moment we were waiting on that window to go in before finishing it off but yeah so there's another job I can get on with but at the moment as we've mentioned on other videos it is of paramount importance that when you are project managing a build like this and you've got tradespeople lined up that you don't muck them about and therefore top priority is getting everything ready it's not it's a couple of weeks time yet probably be about two weeks time and I'll hire the mini to get to do the groundworks, the foundations and whatnot. All the drainage is done, so we can just hook into the, the new inspection chambers just under those boards over there. So the drainage is done and we can hook into that after. So it's literally just a question of digging the fountains out, getting the concrete poured, and then the bricky can start. So we're going to have to scrape back some of the soil here. I've worked it out by the plan that we're going to have to scrape out to it's going to be about three and a half bricks below DPC. So there's a DPC level there. So there's two, three, 
So we're going to have to scrape out, I'll show you around this drain. I'm going to make a separate video about this drain, comedy drain. That level there is where we need to scrape all of the soil out in this entire area because I'll then get backfilled with uh, hardcore and there'll be a concrete um, oversight, suspended timber floor, very, very similar to what we did in the kitchen. Just put a little mark on the wall up here because obviously now we know that there's uh, the sewer running under here but there's no reference point as to where that is anymore so I've just put a little mark on the wall here that little blue mark is the root of the sewer so the sewer obviously runs from that all the way in a straight line to the inspection chamber which is kind of over there we've got temporary drainage sorted out so that's just the uh, rainwater downpipe coming down there and then we've just got some elephant trunk and include a link to that in the description it's so handy to have on a renovation and that just allows water from the roof to uh, drain into the garden over there and that's absolutely fine for now until we've got some proper drains in there's nothing else draining to the back of the house anymore it all goes around the corner to the drain at the front so through the magic of video editing Let's fast forward in time a couple of weeks and as if by magic, a couple of weeks down the line and foundations are all dug. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't really able to film, well, any of digging the foundations other than the odd little bit that Mrs. Mark managed to catch on her, on her phone uh, because we were really up against it and absolutely sod's law. I mean, it's been really dry here for the last couple of months. And then as soon as we started on the foundations, we had torrential rain, like really bad rain. So we've been having to cover all of this up every night and everywhere is just an absolute like quagmire of, of mud everywhere. My digger skills aren't particularly amazing, but we got there. There was a lot of hand digging as well, by the way. There was a lot of places like along this side here where we just couldn't get the digger in so most of this we had to do by hand we've got the digger for a bit of it but most of it was by hand these are the foundations for the side of the house which don't need to go as deep because they're button up to the neighbors foundations all sorts of party wall things that we had to do with that but all the party wall stuff is through which is great again over here here are the existing foundations of the house Look at how thin they are. They're ba barely, what, 150 mil thick or something? Barely, honestly. So, but that rebar's nice and bonded in now. That brick's there for no reason. But I think the plan is the Bricky's coming out next week. So I'm going to check with the Bricky what height he wants the founds poured to. We've got the pour booked. It's all getting pumped in. Nine cubic meters of concrete. So there's a lot of, too much to do by barrow. Nine cubic meters. So we are going to get that pumped in next week and the Brickie's going to just double check what level we're going to take the founds to. But we'll probably just match the level of this, but uh, we shall see, see what the Brickie wants. There's the studio room, electrics and data, by the way. I need to check whether or not the founds are going to hit that. If it does, I should probably duct the electric cable, but I need to just double check and see if, if we are going to come up to that level. And then we've also dug out here, ready for the oversight work. This isn't perfect yet, but as long as we've got the bulk of the material out, but we've dug down a good gate and see where the bricks are, are damp. So we've come down a good two brick height uh, from ground level down because it was much easier to do that before the foundations were cut because getting the digger into this area now would be really awkward. So I uh, wanted to get the bulk of the material out of here first so we did that first and then we did the foundations afterwards so that is an enormous amount of material that's come out if you're wondering i mean it's nine cubic meters of concrete but that's only coming up to 600 mil or something these are 900 deep foundations 900 by 600 foundations so what do we do with all that material well you would need a lot of grab lorries to get rid of all that but Fortunately, because we are blessed with a big back garden, we've been able to make use of it. First of all, we've got a big pile here that we're going to use for backfill because there'll be loads of backfilling to do. So we've left a pile here specifically for backfill. You can see how muddy it is, by the way. Look at this. Oh, it's just minging. It was just torrential rain. And it's awful working in those sort of conditions because you're just, you're slipping and sliding 
all over the place and your digger's slipping and it's just awful. But we're gonna raise up the garden in this area here. So I put all these little posts around just to get an idea of where we're leveling it to. Mrs. Mark did a huge amount on the hand digging as well, by the way, absolute trooper. Couldn't have done it without her. So there was a lot of hand digging to do on this. But I mean, each one of these piles is a drop off in the uh, mini dumper. So each one of these piles is the equivalent of four wheelbarrows. And we must have had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, at least five. So at least 25 loads here. So that's the equivalent of a hundred wheelbarrows in this section here. And then over on this side where you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So what's that, 52 wheelbarrows worth on this side as well. And this is just the top soil, by the way. On top of that, there was then a shed load of clay that we just had to get rid of. So that's just gone on a secret little area at the bottom of the garden here. But this is all stuff, it'll just get buried and um, this will have top soil. But the, what can you do with that other than make plates with it? So. That'll just kind of get buried and we'll have some soil over the top of that. And what we've even managed to do is we managed to salvage a whole load of bluebell bulbs that came out when we were digging out one particular area. We've got a whole pot of bluebell bulbs. So when we rake out at the top here, level all this out a little bit and we'll, this is all quite nice topsoil here. So we'll use that to obviously go over the clay. We'll chuck the bluebell bulbs into that and then they should come up next kind of spring-ish. So all the paperwork's done, party ball awards done, the building inspector's checked everything and he's happy and we've got the concrete pour and pump all booked in, ready to rock. So only remaining stuff to do is we need to put some mesh down in the hole. I'm gonna get all the mesh cut to size. We've got all the little spaces uh, ready for the mesh as well. So I'm going to get all these ready to literally drop in, but I'm not going to put them in yet because we've got torrential rain forecast for tomorrow. So we're going to have to cover everything up if we end up with water down in here and we end up having to bail it out a little bit, then that's not particularly easy if there's mesh down here. So I'll put the mesh in literally on the morning of the pour. I might put some of the shuttering in just to stop any more cave-ins or anything like that, because when you get torrential rain, you do need to stop the, the sides from caving in, but this is pretty solid, very, very clay. I mean, you can see the clay at the top end there. It's sticky, sticky, solid clay. So the ground's relatively stable, but uh, yeah, I don't want to jinx it. So I've made one of the shuttering things for over the pipes. So I've made one of them. I've got another one to make. Ironically, I'm having to make it out of MDF because I am not spending 70 quid a sheet on OSB. Not a chance, so I'm gonna use MDF uh, and I'm just gonna line the sides of it with plastic and I think that'll do a better job anyway. It was a fraction of the cost, crazy times that we're living in at the minute. And other than that, I will come back to you once we have some concrete in these giant holes. I have pumped a lot of water out of this, but that's gonna do for now because more biblical rain is forecast. So there's no real point in completely emptying this. The weather's forecast to get better tomorrow. It, this little bit at the front here is only about an inch deep or something. And actually the, uh, the try and walk over this without falling in. The um, drain shuttering is actually acting as quite a good sump for collecting the water from. So all of the water from the surrounding edges will run into the uh, shuttering where the drains are. So I think what I'll do 
I'm going to leave it at that for a day, otherwise this video is going to end up being four hours long. And tomorrow, after another 12 hours of biblical rain, this will be full again, and then I can pump that out, and then any remaining water I can pump out of this natural little sump. Remove the shuttering there, back fill. Jobs are good and ready for the bricky to start. I think that will do for today. We'll go and check the river for one last time. Try not to fall over. The river is high, quite high. I think it will get a little bit higher than that before the day's out, because a lot more rain is forecast. So let's see how it goes. Forgot to mention before, you probably saw us smashing the living daylights out of the shuttering there just to get that little bit of shuttering away from that edge. I will properly cut out that bottom bit, but I've just had to remove the top section so that we can get an accurate measurement across from that side to that side so that the brick can just do a final tally of any extra trench blocks and things like that that we need. So obviously it's difficult measuring that up when uh, there's shuttering in the road. So I will sort that out properly when it's not biblical rain along with removing all the other shuttering and tidying everything up and getting everything ready. For now, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. I'll, I'll show you some photographs. There, there is foundations under there. But for now, I think we'll call it a day. As per usual, take care folks, look after each other, be nice, and I shall see you next time. Tatty bye.